enough of a day to be outside. But when I came in here, I thought, boy, the sun is shining in here, and things are looking good, and especially in the hearts of you guys. And today, I just want you to know that I'm honored to have a part in this ceremony. I'm just so thrilled for you. You know, the two of you, I don't have to tell you this, but the two of you have weathered some of life's toughest storms. But at the same time, we know that God is good, and He blesses us when we stay true to Him. I'm reminded of Romans 8 and verse 28 when it says that all things work together for good. For those that love God, for those who are called according to His purpose. So today, we see that God is good in the lives of the two of you. I'm, I'm thrilled, and I know that all the people here are thrilled to see the sun shining in your hearts again. And today, as the two of you have fallen in love and has brought you to this point, and you desire to share your lives together as husband and wife, we want you to know as family and friends here today that we wish you the very best. May God bless you with everything that you desire and dream for in the life of one another. And we just pray that you will find happiness with one another that just continues to abound in the lives of the two of you. You know, marriage is God's idea. Has been from the very beginning. We remember that God had created all mankind or all of creation and then he created man. And then we learn that as he observed that man, that he, of all the things he had made, he then finally found something that was not good. And that was that man to be alone was not good. So we learned that he caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh and stayed thereof. Then from that rib he fashioned a woman. And then he brought the woman to the man. And he said, uh, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. The Bible goes on to say, Therefore, what God hath joined together, or man shall leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. And then Jesus later on said, What God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Solomon said, Whoso finds a wife finds a good thing, and obtains favor of the Lord. Then in the New Testament, in Hebrews 13 and verse 4, we learn that marriage is honorable in all. So today you honor one another, you honor your family, most of all, you honor God by doing things His way. And we pray that God will bless you so richly in every good way. Before we get into those all-important vows that you will take in just a minute, I want to take just a couple of minutes to share with you what I call just some practical things. Probably things, surely, that you already know. But things even those of us that have been married for a long time still need to know, be reminded of, that really make a marriage what it should be. Number one, I know that you already have in mind, and that is always keep God, number one. In that God created marriage, obviously he knows everything that it takes to make a marriage work. We said a while ago, no doubt it's the love that you have for one another that has brought you to this point. But you know, you're mature enough to know that it's not just the emotional love, and it's great to have that emotion of love for one another. But the real love that it takes to make a marriage what it ought to be is a serving love. The kind that is spoken of in 1 Corinthians 13. We learn that love suffers long and is kind. We learn that it does not envy. It does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It's not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. So if you continue in your love for God, which you already are Christians, and you know the importance of serving God above all things, but you carry that love right on in to your family of saying, we love God and we're going to honor Him in our family, and do things His way, we know that your marriage can be and will be all that you ever hope that it can be and will be. Also, don't forget to continue to date one another. <laughs> I know you guys have been dating for a while, but it doesn't matter how long you've been together. If you really want to make your marriage flourish, continue to date. Every once in a while, somebody will call me up on date night that you did not have together. And I'll tell them, can't do that tonight. Why? I have a date. And it's always funny to me. There's this pause because they know we've been married 31 years and they'll say, with who? <laughs> I'll say, with my good wife. 
And if you continue to do the things that you have done already to win the love of one another and continue those things right along, it's amazing how your relationship can just be cultivated and become more and more of what it should be. Also, we live in a very, very busy world. You know that already. I know that you have occupations, you have family, and all those things are important and they have their place. But you know, we just have to make time for one another. Sometimes we have to say no, even to some good things, so that we can say yes to some better things. So I would say that even in this very busy world that we live in, that you still make your relationship top priority. You already are, but one final thing that I would suggest to you is continue to be best of friends. There's a wonderful statement that is made, and I don't know who made it first, but it says that when you have a good friend, that your troubles are cut in half, but your joys are doubled. And when you can always find that special friendship in one another, and they're the number one person in your life, isn't it amazing how that whatever troubles come along, they can be cut in half, and whatever joys come our way can always be doubled. So continue to develop that good friendship that you already know. Keep God first. Make your relationship a top priority. Keep on dating and always be best of friends and make that, too, a priority in your lives. Well, now we come to that all-important time when you actually get to take those vows. So, Walter, I know that you have a ring that you want to present to Thelma. And if you will take that at this time and place it upon her ring finger. With this ring, with this ring I, be I be with it. And I pledge to you, pledge to you my love, my, love, my devotion, my devotion, and faithfulness until death do us part. And Walter, I also want to ask you, do you take Delbert to be your lawful and wedded wife? To live together after the laws of God and the holy estate of marriage, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, in adversity or in prosperity, and be faithful unto her until death do you part. I believe that you do, and may God bless the vows that you have taken. Delma, I know that you also have a ring that you want to present to Walter, and I ask you to place it on his ring finger and also repeat the same vows. With this ring, I be with, and I pledge to you my love, my devotion, and faithfulness until death do us part. And Thelma, do you take Walter to be your lawful and wedded husband, to live together after the laws of God and holy state of marriage, to love and honor and cherish, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, in adversity or prosperity, and be faithful to him until death do you part? I believe that you do. And again, may God bless those beautiful battles. Let's pray together. Our gracious and wonderful Father, we thank you for this joyous day. Father, what a wonderful day it is because today we honor you by doing things your way. Father, we're thankful for marriage that it cured the aloneness of man. We're thankful, Father, for the blessings it can bring to the lives of those who choose to marry even this very day. And today we pray for Walter and Thelma that you will bless them, you will bless the vows they have taken, you will bless the lives that they begin together as husband and wife. And Father, we just pray that you will watch over them and protect them and help them. And Father, we know with your help that their marriage can be all the more that they ever dreamed that it could be. <coughs> Father, thank you for being with us here today. We pray that you'll continue to watch over us and bless us always and all things. In Jesus' name. Amen. It is now my privilege and honor as a minister of the gospel and by the authority vested in me by the laws of this state to now pronounce you husband and wife. And Walter, you may kiss your brother. <laughs> Gentlemen, it is my distinct privilege at this time to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Walter Hodges. Oh, Lord. 